Kirby Hocutt, the chair of the selection committee, is with us now. Kirby, we could talk some about number one, but look, that's going to that's going to play itself out at some point. I think the most interesting thing was Ohio State, Oklahoma, as opposed to Clemson and Notre Dame. What were the biggest points of discussion among that group of teams? Well, Reese, very passionate discussion in these four walls that are behind me uh, with the selection committee. Really, the the discussion from teams three through seven uh, was as passionate as any discussion that I can remember the selection committee having. Uh, when you looked at number three, Notre Dame, three wins against CFP top 25 teams, only loss coming against number one, Georgia. Uh, Clemson, impressive resume, six wins against teams with a winning record, two wins against CFP top 25 teams, only loss, um, quarterback was injured, returned the following game. And then head-to-head -head results were important in five, six, and seven for the selection committee. So when you Knowing got that all of the... Or these teams will have an opportunity to enhance their resume in front of the committee in the weeks ahead. I know that you don't match up teams one versus one, but it stands to reason based on the selection committee criteria that if teams are comparable, head-to-head -head comes into play. You look at the, at the polls right now, and Ohio State's ranked well ahead of Oklahoma, yet Oklahoma won the game. How would you describe that aspect of the evaluation in the room as it pertained to Oklahoma and Ohio State in the head-to-head -head meeting? Well, Reese, you, as you know, we don't look at the other polls. Uh, the first ranking in our eyes came out uh, just now with our top 25. Um, you know, the, the Ohio State had a great win last weekend against Penn State. They've played really well uh, since their loss to Oklahoma. But at this point in the season, that head-to-head -head matchup uh, is important to the selection committee and will continue to be important to the selection committee. What separated Georgia and Alabama, it seems that resume would be it. At least that's what my guys think. Is that what happened in the room? Well, it was. I mentioned the debate discussion being very close for teams three through seven. I would say it was even closer for teams one and two. Uh, we spent considerable time yesterday talking about the differences between Georgia and Alabama. We began our day this morning. Um, we ended our day today with great debate, uh, as passionate debate as I've seen. Um, at the end of the day, it was the two wins against CFP top 25 teams for Georgia, uh, especially the win over number three, Notre Dame, gave Georgia the very slight edge over Alabama this week. Kirby, as you look at the course of teams' resumes, sometimes a team has a win, Alabama over Florida State, or a loss, Oklahoma to Iowa State, that over the course of time, the perspective on that win or that loss changes. How does the committee view when a team beat another one or when a team lost to another one as it starts to evaluate that team uh, based on the changes and evolution of a team over the course of a season? Well, very well aware of the circumstances associated with uh, particular wins or losses. Uh, when the committee talked about uh, Alabama's win over Florida State this year, uh, understanding that Florida State was at full speed. Their quarterback uh, participated in that game. And uh, you're right, Reese, the, the Oklahoma loss to Iowa State. Iowa State's a very good football team. They haven't lost since they uh, brought in their backup quarterback against Oklahoma. So the selection committee is very, aware, very well aware of uh, unique circumstances associated with each game throughout the course of the season. Kirby, we appreciate the time you spent. We'll be doing this throughout the uh, course of the season on Tuesday nights until Selection Sunday comes along. Kirby Hocutt joining us. Thank you, Kirby. Thank you.